All right, we are rolling. Welcome to the Dev House Podcast, your window into the metaverse. Today, we are going to have Stine Tinkle joining us, and Eric Peterson and myself, Jim Welch, will be your hosts. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, yeah. good Friday, productive. Right, it, it's a very uh, video-focused Friday, right? We're doing some been. green screen production. We're doing the podcast, of course, today. So we're kind of hopping the uh, cameras around quite a bit. Yeah, we have Shay behind the boards. Hey, right. Shay. Hey. We, we've yet to discover if his engineer mic comes through Pro Tools, so we may hear him say hi. Oh, yeah, no. I don't know that it does, but we can try. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Perfect. So it's one of those like YouTube videos where you point and you're like, click here, and then something may or may not actually show up when you do that. Um, so we, uh, you know, this is our first episode, so we're going to kind of be walking everyone through our format and how we are going to be normally doing this. So um, we we have a segment that we call Check Out Some Gear. And so we're going to hop into that and check out some gear. Shay should be pulling it up now. Right. And OK, so the gear today is let's let's pull that up on the screen, Shay, that website. So when Eric, I know Eric found this, uh, it was what, AWE. Yeah, I have some friends and they were describing this product that a that they had not seen at AWE uh, Campfire 3D. If you scroll down, Shay, you can get some details into it. What was impressive on this is it's got wider field of vision than the HoloLens Magic Leap, as you can see in their clever diagram there. Yep. Yeah. And that's so I, I've used the the Magic Leap on HoloLens um, and I found that's my biggest complaint is field of view. So for HoloLens, I had a really cool um, Lemmings game. I don't know if you played that when yep. you were younger, but yeah, it's just like Lemmings. little guys that like walk off the ledges and stuff. Um, so they had that. And what was cool is you could like look and you're looking at a table and a couch and the Lemmings are building bridges to cross between furniture. Super neat, but you can only see like this much. Sure. So you're, it, it kind of breaks the immersion. Yep. So, um, you know, the hologrammy type look and the field of view, I think, are the biggest challenges with these types of headsets. So that's that's awesome. Um, was it the creator that you were talking to or someone no. who used it? Yeah, it was an attendee, somebody who used it. Um, he recommended other product, products that he saw the potential in but didn't get hands-on use the way he did with this. So yeah. he was impressed by being able to try the experience um, again, selling that field of vision improvement was a huge aspect to why right. he was recommending it. Uh, another feature that he found uh, was attractive was if you scroll down, Shay, we can see uh, using your phone as the controller. So you're ditching the Vive puck a little lower, please. Yeah, there we go. That thing looks like something of Star Trek. It's, right. It's like right. a phaser. <laughs> yep. Which I'll, we all want out of our cell phones. Sure. Uh, and if you go down, you can see that your there's phone into a controller. Wait, go back up for a yeah. second. What is... Transforms your phone into an intuitive controller with powerful tools for working with 3D models. Intriguing, vague, but intriguing. Yeah. So <laughs> we all have the phone. Um, so incorporating that device, just having it in an app, it just limits the peripherals, all the extras. So if you scroll down, you can see that there's also the app that allows you to uh, select it. Oh. Go back up. Just oh, yeah. So you yep. can, yeah, you can navigate an app. Yeah. So it's it helps you navigate. Yeah. So I thought it's kind of repurposing the devices we already have. So it, it uses the con your phone as the controller. Right. Okay. So so your headset is the big, uh, you know, HoloLens style with the glass front. And then instead of a, a hand device, you just repurpose your control or your, your phone. That's yeah. interesting. I would imagine that saves a little bit in production cost because it has a gyroscope built in and, and things like that. Um, and, and of course, then you could build an app that you can keep uh, updating with its own screen. So that, sure. that's pretty clever. Um, yeah. Interesting. What was the console? Did he talk about that at all? Like, if we scroll up, what is this? He didn't get around to that. So yeah, Simulant we can. Three monitor. We can guess again. I haven't used it. It just uh, piqued my interest. That is, in, I am intrigued. I'm gonna have to look more into this. So, so that's very cool. So this is an example of what I call an MR headset, right? So mixed reality. So we we talk a lot about. AR for augmented reality, VR for virtual reality, um, and something that Magic Leap was was kind of coining or, or used a lot that I liked was MR. Um, and so it's mixed reality. The idea that, yeah, AR sort of overlays things. Think, think like Google Glasses. So you have the little you know thing with like some UI HUDs. 
But I always think of MR as taking the digital content of augmented reality, but putting it integrated with the environment. So like sure. if you're thinking Pokemon Go and Pikachu shows up on the ground, well, he can walk behind the pillar. And, and the, the app is aware that there's a pillar there and it properly occludes or blocks the vision of that character. Yep. Um, that's what these can, can do. Um, they're very expensive. Their field of view is bad. And the, the hologram nature of the, the content can be leave some things to desire. So I think there's still some work to do in this area. But yep. this is exciting to see the field of view is being addressed. So Yeah, they don't put the price on the website. So I know that's a barrier to entry for many. Um, there's... Uh, I think you can apply to uh, get a model in the next year. Um, but it is just interesting to know there's other people in this space besides the main uh, Google, Microsoft. So, sure. Yeah. yeah, trying different things. Uh, I wish them the best. It looks like a fun, fun use. Um, but yeah, again, Absolutely. not vouching for it. <laughs> we haven't it used it. We will see. Yeah, very cool. Um, well, perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you for for pulling that up there for us, Shay. Um, I think the next thing we would hop into is a, a segment we like to call Dev Abominations. Um, this is a fun segment that we just think it's it's kind of a glimpse into the weird, wacky stuff that software development and uh, kind of 3D development lend itself to. So I think today we have a little clip from uh, from our good friend Liam here at the Dev House. Uh, let's let's pull that guy up if we have it, Shay. He so this goes into the issues with a mismatch between basically a rig or you can think of a skeleton and uh, a digital skeleton and a model. So right now, you know, we have weird things happening. Like what is that floating in the sky? And you can kind of start to make sense like, oh, it's his hip. But that's definitely like a gun, I think, with a bayonet on the top. We, we had a project where we, we were doing historical kind of colonial figures and we, you know, we have a model of this you know, red coat and he has all his gear on. Um, and then we, we make an animation, but it doesn't always fit to uh, the right model. So if you accidentally attach it to the wrong thing, it tries to connect the wrong parts to the wrong things. Uh, and you get fun, crazy stuff like that. So knees that shouldn't bend how knees bend. Yeah. Yeah. We had one clip we we. Uh, it lovingly referred to as floppy sword uh yeah. and it was it was uh, the, his walk was perfect the animation looked great except the sword that he had on his side uh it matched his knee bend exactly uh and so you know those are some things when you're when you're rigging a character you have to make sure you take into account and and uh make sure the model and the rig are, are solid so that is a dev abomination uh yep. we'll share these each episode because they happen a lot <laughs> They are entertaining. It's, yeah, it's part of the process, and they're fun to capture. And uh, we can't use them in the final product, so we can share them here. Cool. Um, so yeah, so I think with that, we can jump into our main topic today. Um, so we can bring in on uh, Steve in on to to chat with us um, today. Let me pull up my my note reference here. Um, so we're going to be talking about you know why businesses are joining the metaverse. Um, so let's welcome Steve Tinkle. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Welcome. Appreciate you taking the time today. You know, obviously we, you know, we know each other and, and I respect your perspective on business. So it made a lot of sense to kind of bring you in on for this specific topic. You know, the the Facebook leading the charge with the the rebrand from Facebook to Meta is sort of what's spurring this. But I think we'll, as we're talking, we'll kind of dig into other organizations doing yeah, the same right. thing. Yeah, it's interesting for me to see because if you... If you look back in time, uh, there are two big names that stand out to me that I think Mark Zuckerberg should be very cautious of. Um, the One of them was in my lifetime where these big industry tycoons were talking up something like, this is going to be amazing. And they said, this technology is going to fundamentally change transportation. And we just can't wait to reveal it to you. You're going to love it. And they hyped that up for months and months and months. And everyone's like, all right, it must be a big deal. It's going to be great. It's going to change transportation. and it was the Segway. Mm, nice. And so the coolest think, vehicle ever. <laughs> the coolest vehicle ever. I'm We're all going to have one. Yeah. We all are. You know, now as you think about, was that really the proper introduction for the Segway? You know, is that, is talking it up that way really the way to go? And prior to that, which obviously is not my generation, but the Edsel was the same thing where they had announced this car it was going to be this amazing car of the future. And it was, it was big and ugly and just fell flat. 
uh, probably one of the first commercial uh, flops like that. And so when I hear him talking up the metaverse, and it, it is a bold move to change your name and say, we're going to call ourselves basically Web 3.0 or Meta. I get it. And I, I hear your confidence. And I think the world's very intrigued by that. But is this going to be another segue? I'm kind of curious, you know, how, how it will shake out. Um, personally, I'm a fan of organic development as opposed to calling my shot, especially at that scale. Yeah. Hey, but, you know, maybe they know something I don't. So. Yeah, I mean, they, they announced that they've, they're investing $10 billion into into this initiative. So, I mean, it's, they're, I feel like yeah. that's cards all in. I mean, they've, I watched uh, Mark on an interview with Gary Vee the other day, and um, he was saying, you know, we've been, we've been working towards this for some time now. You know, we bought Oculus and, and Gary was sort of saying like, yeah, we, all your things, you know, the potential acquisition of Snapchat that may or may not have happened, uh, the Instagram acquisition, these things make sense because they're in social, they're in your space. But when you guys acquired Oculus, I was sort of like, what's that about? Hmm. And now it's sort of making more sense uh, that they've been wanting to, to shift, you know, um, and I think it fits a little bit with with Facebook's MO. You know, they're they're a social company. They're a human connection company. And they're like, what's next? You know, we had photos, we had videos, you know, we're sharing memes and things now. It's like that can't be the limit. Like that can't be the closest human connection we can have over digital interface. So the most logical, I think, thing that we can see is virtual reality. It's spatial. It's it's AR. Yeah. Well, and that to your point you're well founded there elon musk was doing an interview and this one it, it's kind of a, i'll borrow a little bit of different uh spaces but he, his concern was over ai and he's like ai is basically going to kill us and basically just pillage the world and destroy it and he went so far as to say he reached out to all the world leaders and asked them to stop he's like i need you as government to stop this from happening because it's going to be bad Ironically, he's now making has a robot. Yeah. So yeah, sure. maybe he decided, you know, I've got a friend who says, look, if there's ever a zombie apocalypse, I'm just going to join the other side. I'm not going <laughs> to fight. Yeah. So well, they're his, gonna re win. his reassurance was that, hey, don't worry, it can't run that fast. <laughs> it, was, it was a very yeah. strange announcement. <laughs> that's, that's he's got he's got Mars. To this. He's got Mars on what his could brain. could possibly go wrong. Yeah, he'll just well, run to Mars. But. The thing that he said, though, that stood out to me was he said the problem with whether it's AI or I would extend even virtual reality or the metaverse, he said the problem is the human computer interface. He said we already are cyborgs. We already have the phone, which is all this technology. And whether it's asking Google or Siri a question, we're, we're already augmenting us with technology. The problem is the human computer interface is limited to our fingers of typing or our eyes to read or our ears to hear. He said, if there was a different interface that could accelerate the human computer interaction, you fundamentally change the game. And so as long as the human, human computer, if, if that interface is kludgy, then you're probably not gonna see huge incremental gains, even though the computers can already do some pretty fast things. Right, that's really interesting to think about technology as an extension of our body and that uh, yeah, we're already part machine because if you step into an elevator, everyone's looking down. You don't ever, you know, just have that quiet moment. People are always connected. Um, Eric, do you have any thoughts? What What are your thoughts specifically on kind of why why now are businesses sort of adopting this shift? Because it, it seems like it kind of came all at once. Now, of course, Facebook bought Oculus years ago, and so they've been planning some things. VR, AR has been a movement for some time, but suddenly everything's starting to snowball. Um, do you have any feelings for why that's happening? Yeah, uh, to your point, this technology isn't new. We've had VR for quite some time. We've had an AR, we've been using it. I don't think everyone is aware that that's an aspect of the metaverse or uh, that they've been using it without calling it augmented, uh, you know, their nieces, uh, face filter was an augmented right. reality solution. It's a limited one, but they've been a aware and using it probably without their knowledge. Uh, so it is interesting to us in the business because we've been operating in this space and all of a sudden it's got a flashy new name and it's yeah. an umbrella for everything that's immersive or 3D, a persistent layer of reality. Um, so yeah, it does seem like the industry leaders, you got Microsoft, obviously Facebook, 
um, Nike now Nike with, with the NFT Roblox, yeah, yep. and Roblox and uh, Fortnite. I think is a huge catalyst. So you look at all these things, and it seems like companies are we're kind of eyeing each other to see who's going to jump in the deep end first mm -hmm. and really invest the money. And so you see, you know, Facebook and Microsoft industry leaders and okay, well, if they're taking the dive then we need to follow suit. Nobody wants to be last to the party and no right. one wants to be first. Yep. So, but we've been in this, in this space and operating in those uh, technologies. So yeah, it is interesting. I hope Facebook doesn't own the term metaverse. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it seems like they want to put their stamp on it. And, they're working, God bless them. They can go in their direction and make it however they'd like to, but we'll be over here doing our thing as well. So yeah, it seems like the, uh, the industry is coming around to tech that we were already aware of the value in. Yeah. Well, I think one of the reasons why I wanted this to be our first episode was, you know, why are businesses sort of adopting the term or shifting or exploring the metaverse? And if you, if you followed us the studio for a while, you know, we've been an AR VR gaming company, right? Or sometimes it's termed XR, kind of an umbrella term for AR VR. Um, and then you'll see, you know, that we're, we're now a metaverse company who does AR VR gaming. It's, I think part of the reason why now is because a lot of these companies were already doing it, but now they have a term they can simply use to define it. Sure. So it's like, Hey, Facebook, drew attention to this term that you know someone in a sci-fi novel years ago created and then recently it's been getting some buzz and then facebook's like yes this is a thing metaverse is a thing we're investing in it and so now it's it's as quote easy for some a studio like ours or or nike or somebody to say hey yeah we're doing the metaverse we've been doing it but don't worry about it we're doing the metaverse and it's really just kind of business as usual in the sense of innovation like right. innovation has been happening without a clear title and now we have something to call it sure so yeah. so yeah that's a good point you know when you ask the question you know why why would businesses adopt this there's only one reason for a business to engage in that activity and it's going to be to make money um, because there has to be a return on investment so uh, the other point you mentioned was it's vocabulary so if if we're talking about something and we're describing it, but there's no word around it, we really can't have effective conversations as people. And people, you know, we share through stories. Um, and so how can you have a story if there's no word? And when you say, okay, this is called the metaverse and I know what it's about. So if somebody says, hey, I'm in this new immersive, like it's amazing, I don't even know what the word is, but we're doing this development, software development. Uh, what do you do? Like, well, we, we make software for cell phones. Like, I mean, you make apps like that's 10, 15 years ago. And that word now lets me know where are you in the continuum? So when you introduce this new word of the metaverse, um, it, the problem with it really is we're trying to describe something without really fully knowing what it is. We mm -hmm. don't really have the analogies yet. We don't have the stories yet. Um, you know, I look at Etsy, for example, rolling out their virtual world and of all the if, if you consider that leadership, I would have never, ever thought Etsy would be one of the first ones to say, we're going to create this new 3D world. But why would they do that? It's not just because they have money. They believe it's going to increase the adoption rate or purchase rate of the products that are on their platform. So if, if I make knickknacks and I want to sell them and you can say, here's this vase, for example, or this butterfly painting, and you can see it on your wall or on a wall then that increases your ability to picture it in your world. So instead of me having to look at a picture, like for example, on Amazon, one of the rules on Amazon, if you go Google anything, the I forget what they call it, but your main kind of hero image in the search results has to be on a white background. It cannot be a lifestyle photo. Well, that's fine to showcase the product, but it, it makes it harder for the consumer to know what to do with it and where do I place it in my world. So with Etsy saying, come move around, come interact, come see these things and maybe pair it up with other items. It, it's a different, to the other point, different human computer interface. So if I'm looking at a list, like for example, I, I go to a grocery store and I see a list of items, milk, cheese, bread, that's fine. But if I walk into this cheese section and I can see them all and I see bread next to them or wine that pairs with them there's all these uh oh no I, I don't have a pouring i don't have a bottle opener 
the what do you call those your kind of impulse buys you now bring impulse buys back in we, right you, you can, you're not really going to do impulse buys looking at a list so to me i see it as being it's this technology that is equipping them to make more money because it's a better human computer experience it's a better interface for us uh, which we obviously can talk in all the applications of that one but that's the main reason why i see the adoption would be anywhere that there's friction in an existing system if the metaverse technology whatever it may be whether it's as you said fully integrated augmented mixed if, if it's making it a more efficient system then you would expect adoption rate and you should expect financial returns as well and if not people are going to throw that away pretty quickly sure yeah no that's, that's a valid point to sort of get us out of the purely uh just oh everyone wants to explore new things and it's exciting it's like no there's there's value here otherwise businesses would not invest in it um and and hopefully that's a positive thing because it encourages people to spend and then it encourages more innovation because they see traction so absolutely um wonderful well uh, i don't have any more direct thoughts about this specific topic but i do have five specific questions i made a little note for myself because I can't remember them all well. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask you these five questions, Steve. Uh, and and we're not going to discuss too much about your answers. We're going to do this for most of our guests. So um, I'll read you a question, hear your answer, then we'll go on to the next one. Sound good? Perfect. Cool. All right. One, what is the metaverse? So I think of the, the metaverse as a, it's almost like a dial, if you will, or a spectrum of con a continuum of technology being integrated into our world so by way of example the car that i drive has a hud on it so as i look into the windshield of the vehicle there's a projection on the windshield of my speed rpms and other information that they say you, you, you need to know this surprisingly the blinker is not on there hmm. i don't understand why you wouldn't show somebody the blinker but what it does is it allows you to see your speed without taking your eye off the road so obviously that's a safety feature and that's nice um, personally, I don't understand why there's not more vehicles that have adopted the HUD, but all a HUD is, is literally a computer screen or a, a simple, simple monitor that is casting the reflection in the windshield. And back to the human computer interface, I have a windshield. I don't have to go buy one and bring it with me or remember it because I left it at home. It's already there. So it's like a natural projection device. But the first car that I owned that had a HUD in it was made in 2003. So that's not even new technology, but I would say it technically qualifies to that definition because it is technology integrated into the natural world. Um, when, if you go back in time again, when people are saying web 2.0 is coming, well, what was web 2.0? Like, how would you define it now that you know what it was? And as you kind of think back through, what were you guys trying to tell us? Was it just multimedia? Was it mixed? you know media on web pages instead of just plain and that was happening because broadband had come along it it would be described differently in retrospect obviously than in the future and i think metaverse is the same way but to me the way i see it is that slow continuum of if you look at full on full immersive i've got you know imagine me doing an interview like this that's virtual reality you know you we control the world all around you all the way down to a reflection Oops, we lost you there for a second. Let's see. There to use is. that kind of technology. Right. I think that, you know, they, that full immersion towards partial immersion and the whole continuum, um, I, I believe that that definition will allow a lot of things to be considered metaverse and technically fit the definition. Yep. Wonderful. Very Great. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Eric, will you take a uh, question two for Steve? Sure. Yeah. What's the coolest tech you expect to see in the next five years? So are you thinking tech as in it's available at all or available to at the consumer De level? Dealer's choice. Yep. Anything on the horizon Dealer's you're choice. excited to see. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, if it's your if it doesn't exist yet, but you can imagine <laughs> right. it coming to, to consumer access in the next five years, that's yeah. fine too. So, you know, it, whether it's, you know, televisions that used to be super expensive, cell phones used to be super expensive. Um, you know, when new technology comes along, the quality is really high, but, you know, uh, today I saw an 86 inch television for, you know, 1700 bucks, right? Used to, that was $10,000. Um, 
so it comes down over time, which makes it more accessible, but let's just say emergence at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would look in entertainment, for example, uh, this show Alter Ego, where the performers are wearing a rig, but they are presenting themselves to a live studio audience and judges. And I don't even know what you would call that. Is it just fully immersive? They're an avatar. You have avatared a human being in real time. And now I haven't seen the full uh, breakdown of the tech, but my assumption is there's these huge black pillars that look like they're decorative elements on the stage. I believe those are probably laser projections that when the laser crosses, it's creating a 3D model. Um, that technology is pretty fascinating that they can do that already in real time. And so what it does is it gives rise to a hologram. And so then you, you can start to think, well, what do I do with a hologram? Because now the technology exists. Um, I think there's a lot of applications of that, whether it's projecting a support rep inside of a store who can answer questions about maybe technology or a product that someone doesn't understand. I think entertainment can happen. It also can close the gap uh, in the human computer, uh, human relationships uh, connection as well. So, you know, being if you're separated from a child or separated from a loved one, that if that technology exists, you can see them as if they were there. Yeah, that, that emotional connection is really, really fascinating yeah. to me. Yep. So Agreed. Whatever we call that uh, 3D avatar state, um, you know, that I think that's probably five years it should be realistic to start seeing things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, somewhat related question. What tech do you think will fall off or fail in the next five years? I'm going to go bold on this one. I think the virtual reality headset is going to die. I just feel like there's other technology that that's a better experience. The immersive world is fine, but the the problem that I see with it is it's so exclusive that when you when you put that thing on, you block out the whole world and you block out everyone else around you. So I actually purchased an Oculus headset. Uh, I I love there's you know the one game in there the Beat Saber that's like wow that's amazing. But it's the only one that really has resonated with me. And so I took it over to share it with a friend. They have a bunch of kids and they put it on. And the minute the child puts it on, they drop out of the, the experience with the family. We're not sharing in that experience anymore. So we don't see what they see on television. We don't see what, you know, what they're experiencing or what that's like. They're just standing there looking all goofy as they slash around. Um, somebody presented an idea of, you know, being able to do meetings or podcasts like this in a virtual world, which is fine as long as you are by yourself. And I think the by yourself component will eventually push it out and there'll be other technology that can give us the same benefit in a more integrated or mixed way. But I, I don't think it's too far fetched to think in five years, people will not use virtual reality headsets. It's very interesting. Yeah, like at least choice. in their current version where they're really blocking your whole face off. You know? Right, right. All right, Eric, what, what do you got for number four? Sure. Yeah, this might be a little, uh, again, vague, but dealer's choice, use your imagination. Uh, favorite interactive experience currently? Something you would consider to be metaverse? It doesn't have to be. I mean, uh, I, whatever, if a, a TV show would not qualify as interactive, but uh, Pokemon on a Game Boy Advance is interactive. <laughs> Yeah. If, if it's something that exists currently, um, I mean, I, I, I think the HUD is one that I like, although it does, I don't know that it technically counts as cool, but um, the vehicles, let's look in transportation, you know, some vehicles are reading signs and projecting, for example, the speed limit on the dash or, or on the, uh, the windshield. Um, and I think you can recognize speed on GPS of what's supposed to be there, but when new signs are popping up and we know what a speed limit sign is, we know what it looks like. Um, to me, I think that's pretty cool because it affects safety. It's a very practical thing. Um, it's not big and flashy, but I think whenever you're delivering value or adding value to someone, I think that's where you start to get legs and see traction. No, it did. It didn't have to be cool or flashy. That's a yeah. great answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love practical, productive results. Yeah. All right, the final one, final question five of five. Uh, what interactive experience would you like to see? Uh, so it's a bit of an imagination exercise. So do you want to see sure. 
the speed limit uh, projected into your eyeballs? Or <laughs> <laughs> so again, I think I think the challenge is in the device. You know, people cannot remember to bring their keys with them. They they lose their sunglasses, and so if if I have to bring a device with me, what happens if I don't have it? I don't have the tech. So I'm just going to set that aside for a minute and suspend disbelief on the fact that let's just say the metaverse is here and it isn't just inside my home. What I'm looking for is technology that can actually move the needle in terms of the human experience in the world. Let's say as we relate to commerce or we relate to other people. So for example, dating has been uh, normalized. One of one of my friends was the founder of Match.com. And back then in the 90s, it was not cool to have a dating profile. Mm -hmm. It was not cool to date someone online or meant something was wrong with you. Whereas now, swipe left, swipe right, it's been normalized. So at the core of dating is the need to connect with another person. And so you don't just read a description that summarizes who you are as a person. You want to be able to interact or ask questions or see them. And so video had stepped in and maybe filled that void a little bit. I think, I wonder, you know, what is the metaverse be able to do for you to be able to interact with someone and get to know who they are within that realm? Or um, think about the, to me, the winners in all technology has always been communication. So how do I communicate with someone else? When cell phones came along, it wasn't just the ability to make a phone call from anywhere. It was that additional apps. I can message you, I can send a text. You know, it wasn't too long ago that if you went to the store and you forgot something and you came back home, you'd have to go back. But now your spouse can just text you, hey, I forgot to put this on the list, grab this, we just ran out. That's connection through communication. So, you know, what could, what could happen in commerce with new technology that could help us maybe say, hey, what you're looking for is over here, or even take transportation, for example, um, I met one of the, he was actually the founder of what we now know as in-car navigation. And this was back in the 80s when he had the idea of, he said, I imagine a, a, a piece of technology with a woman's voice telling you, turn left, turn right, go here, go there. And he created a lot of that technology, but then eventually it became real. Well, what if I need to know where you guys are? And I say, hey, I'm in Dallas. I can't find your office. And like, oh, here, let me just send you a pin so I have to go look on my phone. But what I would love to see is something that has, like, you know, little footprints on the road just saying, follow the little footprints, and then you'll know where Jim is. Um, hey, we used to be at the Starbucks, but we left, but we went somewhere else. So you follow this little blue bunny rabbit, and he hops around, and you just follow him. And, you know, for, you know, matrix references, you can follow the white rabbit to where you want to go. If there's just this amazing taco truck or a cheese charcuterie truck that you want to follow, well, how do I find them? Well, put a little line down on the street. Let me just follow it using regular glasses. Um, it's it's that ability is what I'm really looking for. I think the the technology people can certainly play with, but it, it should make a life easier. Um, and so as I think about those categories, whether it's in you know dating, communication, navigation, commerce, um, those those are where there's a lot of opportunities to really change the way that we we connect with our world and with other people. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. There's there's a, a application that, that I worked on once that did that sort of guiding path through an airport because often you're, every airport's yeah. a little different. So how do I find the nearest restaurant? Oh, well, that's Terminal A and you're Terminal C. So it's different, you know, so uh, definitely value value there. Um, wonderful. Well, that is all we have for uh, kind of the time with you today, Steve. So we appreciate the, you coming on and chatting with us. Um, and we hope you have. Oh, and actually, before you go, what I meant to start with, is there anything that you are working on or ways for people to reach you? Basically, is your moment to plug anything or talk about cool stuff you do? <laughs> sure, sure. Well, my my mission has been to demystify success and then be the mentor that I never had. And the way that I typically do that is through helping businesses grow, to demystify success within business. Um, and so... With a name like Steve Tinkle, it's really hard to remember. It's really easy to find. <laughs> so I usually just say you'll you'll find me on LinkedIn. Perfect. So cool. yes, you can find Steve on LinkedIn. If you need any kind of business consulting or, or advice, he's he's a great resource for that. Um, so again, appreciate your time, Steve. I hope you have a wonderful day and and we'll we'll talk soon.
Yeah, good luck with the podcast. Uh, the rule that I've always heard is you throw your first 10 away. So by that standard, I'm very honored to be your first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we'll make sure this one hopefully gets out there and doesn't get thrown away. All right, right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> right, we are honored, too. All right. So um, that wraps up all of our formal segments here today. And, you know, now we are going to just kind of, um, I guess, open the floor for any kind of closing thoughts. Um, so, Eric, you know, mm -hmm. do you have any, uh, you know, again, today's topic was why are businesses entering the metaverse? Um, any final thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I think Steve put it perfect. There's money, you know, yep. unfortunately, that is make the world go round for better, for worse. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of advantages and nobody wants to be last to the party. Uh, consumers are going to grow to demand. AR applications of 3D visualizations of products. And so the age of 2D text and images is just going to look like blueprints when we're building the physical structures. So, right. yeah, it's just, uh, it's, I think it's just a term that will envelop the web, might have to ditch the phone, and maybe it is just wearables and we're wearing yeah. glasses. But yeah, I think Steve was right on uh, to his point of just the, the interface, how we interface with all this massive information. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I 100% I agree with to that. And I think to add, uh, you know, it's it's the desire for things to be in our environment that we're native to. We're native to a 3D environment. Two dimensional environments are a easy path for us to interact with, but we are used to 3D and we're used to being uh, in this three dimensional space in our real lives. So if we can continue that expectation into a digital play space or workspace or environment it's just kind of keeping with what we know well right it's what we're suited for um so if we can find a way to do that that doesn't feel clunky then i think that's a a win all around so totally agree perfect well appreciate everybody who has chosen to join us today looking forward to doing a lot more of these um, every episode, we're going to have a different guest on that we join, and then I'll probably have different folks from the Dev House join me based on what the topic is. So, you know, Eric joined us today, and he's he's kind of our our expert in business development and uh, you know customer success. So he's talking to to all of our clients and all the folks that we work with, and hearing their ideas and iterating with them and trying to build this this new world. Um, and so he, he, you know, he's a great person to kind of talk about this with. Um, and of course, you know, I'm, uh, I'm head of studio and creative director here, so I get to touch everything a little bit. So um, I'm going to be joining everyone here for all the episodes. Um, so until next time, thank you for joining us on the Dev House podcast, and we'll see you guys soon. We, we hit record, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs>